hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, my top 10 list of lathe safety tips. Well, this week marks week four on our top 10 list for major tools in the shop. And we're going to take it over to the wood lathe. And that is where our focus is on this week's Alternative Tuesdays. So let's get into the list. Number, number 10. 10. Well, some of you might think that number 10 is not that important, but it's all about housekeeping. And what that entails is having a clean and organized area to do your wood turning. Having tools lying around around your work area is just a disaster waiting to happen, guys. If you had this spindle gouge sitting there and all of a sudden, for some strange reason, it got bumped and fell off of the bench or off of your lathe stand here, your first and initial reaction is to reach down and try to catch that. And then you've got this razor sharp gouge now. Well, well let's just say you're heading to emerge to get a few stitches and nobody wants that. So very important and so often overlooked housekeeping, keeping a clean, organized, and clutter-free workstation. Num Number nine. nine. Well, just as important as it is to have a clean and tidy work area, it's also very important to have a proper place to put your lathe. Mounting it on something that is not sturdy enough to house it is asking for trouble. This thing spins or can spin at a high RPM and sometimes the pieces are off centered or not perfectly balanced until you get them turned around and that's going to cause a ton of vibrations in this table. So an unstable table <laughs> is not the best setup. This one here I made and the base is filled with, I don't even know how many pounds of sand. I can barely lift it, let alone vibrate it. It's quite possibly the sturdiest stand I've ever had a lathe on. And it's one of the very important things that you should consider when you're doing your lathe turning is how stable is the platform that houses your equipment. Number eight. eight. Well, at number eight is something that doesn't really affect or concern me, but what it is is long hair. Now, it may be fine and cool to have your long hair in the shop, and you may think it's all wonderful, but when it comes to something spinning like a lathe does and you lean your head down in there and this long, gorgeous, flowing hair of yours gets caught up in that spindle or whatever you're turning and it grabs it and rips it out of your head, you're not going to be happy. <laughs> and it rips it out of your head. That was quite the visual. <laughs> Guys, please, if you have if you have long hair, please, please, tie it back. Stuff it down the back of your t-shirt. Do whatever you can, but keep it away from that spinning chuck. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> your future is this. Number, Number seven. seven. Well, I haven't had hair in so long, I figured I'd leave it in for this next one because they kind of go hand in hand. And what that is, is loose clothing. I brought this up in the drill press safety tips last week and loose clothing is even more dangerous on the wood lathe because there is so many more things to grab a hold of that loose clothing and pull you into that spinning spindle sort of thing. Guys, please get rid of that loose clothing. 
If possible, wear a t-shirt or a turning smock, which has tight cuffs at the sleeves to keep things from dangling like the material of, say, a sweater or a lumber jacket or a loose sweatshirt. Better to have short sleeves than to be pulled into that chuck because something catches the material. I have had it happen and it, I'm telling you, it is a scary experience. For me, it was a spur center that grabbed a hold of the sleeve of my sweatshirt and twisted it up and pulled my arm in. And it's a scary thing to have happen. So the best way to avoid it and keep yourself safe from being dragged in is not have it around. Tape the cuffs if you need to wear a long sleeve and keep them away from the spinning parts. And don't forget to tie your hair back too. <laughs> Number six. Well, number six is one of the things that I see neglected a lot with other turners. And what that is, is safety glasses. Guys, these are not safety glasses. These are so that I can see. These are safety glasses. Well, what's the difference? Well, the difference is these wrap right around, they're tight to my forehead, and they protect from all angles. Also, they're shatterproof. So, I'm telling you, don't trust your eyeglasses to protect your eyes. The only exception with that is if you have your shatterproof plastic lenses and you incorporate a side shield onto them. I'm guilty. I have no side shield. These are not adequate protection for working on a lathe. There are some woodworkers that prefer, I'm saying some, not all, I'm not one of them, but they prefer a glass lens. The reason they prefer a glass lens is it retains less static and therefore the theory is it does not attract as much dust. Imagine a piece of wood smacking that glass lens and shattering it. It would happen so fast that your eye would not have the opportunity to react and close before those glass fragments embedded in your eye. It, it, you know what? It just kind of gives you the willies thinking about it. So why would you take chances with it? Guys, eyeglasses are for seeing. Safety glasses protect your eyes. Put your safety glasses on when you're working on the lathe. No, no. Number five. Well, I'm not even sure how to categorize number five. Um, whenever you work on a lathe, you have the potential or the possibility to get a catch. It's inevitable. It happens with lathe turning. I have seen some pretty horrific accidents come from getting a catch. I have seen some pretty horrific injuries. Um, I'm not going to get into them. This is not a tutorial on how to turn on the wood lathe, but all I'm going to say is that for this safety tip, keep an eye on your chisels. Understand what they do and understand what happens when you move the chisel a certain way. You really want to keep an eye on the shoulders or in the, uh, in the also hated skew chisel, you want to keep your eye on the heel and the toe of it as you're using it because one of the most famous tools for getting a catch is the skew chisel and it is a scary thing. And all I can tell you guys is I guess what this tip boils down to is keep your wits about you and pay attention to where your chisel is on your workpiece because although catches are unavoidable, you want to minimize them because under certain conditions, they can cause some pretty gruesome injuries. Number four. Well, number four has to do with things like a four-jaw chuck or Cole's jaws 
or uh, spur centers and or collets and that sort of thing. And what I'm referring to is the RPM rating on these um, accessories for your lathe, especially for things like Cole's jaws where you'd be finishing the bottom of the bowl and the jaws would be holding it. These things have a, a maximum RPM and they have a maximum RPM for a reason. And that reason boils down to they can come apart at higher RPMs. They can actually tear themselves apart because you're exceeding what they've been tested and rated for. If this thing's only tested and rated for 350 RPM and you're running the thing at 4,000, you are asking for trouble. I'm telling you, you're asking for trouble. So how do you know the speed of your lathe? Well, most lathes have some form of variable speed and mine is no different. Mine is controlled by three different spindles and depending on which spindle your belt is on both top and bottom that will control the speed of your lathe and it has a chart which shows you exactly which spindle and which configuration you need for which speed so although you cannot dial it in exact you can get pretty darn close to what your manufacturer suggests as the maximum so please guys be careful and do not exceed the speed of your lathe's accessories. Number, Number three. three. Number three is all about the proximity of your tool rest to the spinning material or accessories on your lathe. And while you don't want to get too close to something here like the four jaw chuck, you can move it completely away from that so there's no danger of striking it and then bring your tool rest in closer so that you can get in here and work on your piece. As I've said before, this is not a lathe tutorial so I'm not going to get into the proper method. I'm not even really used, I just have a scraper here for demonstration. But what you want to avoid is this situation. You see it a lot. I'm too afraid to get close. So I've got this massive space between here and here. And all this is asking is for this to catch and pull the tool down. It'll damage this. It'll probably snap this. And who knows where your hands are going to end up once that pulls you in. Honestly, you need to have proper setup. So in as close proximity as you can without endangering yourself and keep the distance here to a minimum. I will also caution you about having this too close because if you get a catch and the tool hits and it's strong enough to twist your tool rest. This is going into here. You're, you're way too close. This should have been back just a little further to give you a nice safe working distance. And as your piece gets smaller, you should be adjusting your tool, re uh, tool rest. So guys, proper setup while turning and making sure that your tool is supported properly at all times. Number two. You know, I almost feel bad about bringing up number two because I'm not your boss. I can't tell you how to live your life. I can't tell you what to do. But what I can tell you is that alcohol or drugs have no place in the shop. And I've said it before on the show, and I'm going to say it here as number two for lathe safety do not have alcohol or any kind of impairing drugs in your system while you're using a wood lathe. The potential for injury and serious injury 
uh, over a little misjudgment because you weren't 100% clear, that potential is so high and the results are so devastating. So keep a clear head. One of the other points that I brought in for the safety was watching about the heel and toe of your equipment or your chisels. And guys, it's really hard to get that proper depth perception and see how that heel and toe is in relation to the wood when you're three sheets to the wind or you're half in the bag or you're a little stoned or whatever. If you need the alcohol or the drugs in your shop in order to get that sort of buzz for woodworking or you need to mellow out to do the woodworking, you know what, man, pick a different hobby because booze and drugs don't belong in the shop. Call it preaching if you like, but that's number two. Number, number one. one. I know that you guys are well aware that I'm a huge fan of pulling the power when you work on the tool, but that is not number one when it comes to working on the lathe. Number one is something that drives me absolutely bonkers. I see it on so many lathe videos. I see so many guys online doing it. And you know what? Y'all are nuts. You are seriously crazy if you haven't got one of these. Get it on your head. They're not that uncomfortable. They're lightweight. They're not made of steel. There's no reason you can't wear a face shield. I understand if you're working on a pen and you're doing that fine little last tuning up up to your bushings and you're doing the final sanding and stuff. Okay, I get it. You don't need a face shield for that. But if you're doing rough turning or you're roughing things out and that sort of thing and you haven't got the face shield on, you must think you're too pretty and you need some damage because I can't count the number of times that I've been working on the lathe, turning something to round, and I've had a piece of what I was turning come flying off and you hear ding off the face shield. You see it coming at you. It's coming right at your face, but thank goodness that shield was in the way. I have had pieces ricochet off my face shield when I had a basement shop and I've had that piece actually embed itself into the joists of the floor above. Guys, it is so scary over something so simple. So please stop taking chances with your face. Put your face shield on. And there you have it my top 10 list of safety tips for the wood lathe. You've heard me say it before, this is not a definitive list. This is not the beginning and end all. This is just my top 10. I'm sure there are plenty more that we can mention. Things like cutting the corners off your blank when turning it round so that you're turning more of an octagon than what you are a square. Or cutting it, you know, rough shaped circle. How about keeping sharp tools so that you're not working so hard, you're not pushing so hard to get that cut and to get that really clean finish. The harder you push, the harder your machine works, the more you're gonna get yourself off balance and the more risk for injuries. How about wearing gloves on a lathe? <laughs> not in my world, boy. That is a good way to get a catch and have that glove ripped off your hand or worse, have your hand pulled into that spinning equipment. There are those that wear gloves on the lathe and if that's what you prefer, more power to you. But for me, it isn't happening. What's your tip, guys? You got a good one for working on the lathe and how to keep safe? Drop it below in the comments. I'd love to hear it and I'm sure everybody else would love you to share it with them. Guys, I wanna thank you so much for tuning in this week. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe, click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications, and share the video if you've enjoyed the content. Guys, 
I hope you've enjoyed today's show. I hope you've taken something away from it. I hope you're going to drop me a comment below and give me your tip for lathe safety. And I also hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.